can't count the times I almost said what's on my mind But I didn't And just the other day I wrote down all the things I'd say But I couldn't I just couldn't
I'll spend it without you by my side The clouds are gonna run, the earth's gonna shake But I'll be a shelter through the wind and the rain And we'll bear this love from the ground up Now till forever it's all in me, all of you Just take my hand and I'll be the man and dad Gregory, can't wait to see you. I love you so much. We'll be at the wife. I'm so excited. Love you. I I cannot believe that today is here. This would be the best day of my life. All my family, my friends, and I get to, to marry you. So I'm I can't wait to see you. You're gonna look so beautiful. I'm gonna cry my eyes out. But I, I love you so much. I, I can't wait to spend our life together. So I love you. Bye. I remember your hair, the way it smelled like the sea, and the glance that you gave me when you were ready to leave. The way the band faded out as you led me down to the edge of the water, cool night, getting out of all that I could think about is your lips on my lips, my hands on your hips. Swaying to the music only we could hear Say beneath our feet, underneath that fear Moonshine, starlight Maybe I could feel my life begin In a moment that I would give my life to live again It's like you came out of nowhere Knock me back on my heels I wasn't trying to warn you I wasn't sure how to feel But then your eyes met mine And there were no more excuses I knew what I wanted And I knew it was you Alright guys, go ahead Go ahead and walk out oh, You look so beautiful, <laughs> Chris Oh, I love you so much. You are stunning. That's a beautiful girl. Thank you. You have to do a little twirl. Ooh. That's so nice. Your mom goes, I can't watch it. <laughs> you could have picked out a nice one. Aww. It you so well. It does. Yeah. All right. Give each other one more hug. Give each other a kiss. Yep. Aww. More than a feeling. Your lips. On my lips, my hands, on your hips Swaying to the music only we could hear Say beneath our feet, underneath that fear Moonshine, starlight Baby, I can feel my life begin In a moment that I would give my life to live again I remember your hair The way it smelled like the sea and the glance that you gave me when you were ready to leave The way the band faded out as you led me down to the edge of the water Cool night getting out of all that I could think about is Your lips on my lips, my hands on your hips Swaying to the music only we could hear 
here beneath our feet underneath that fear moonshine starlight maybe i can feel my life begin in a moment that i would give my life to live again it's like you came out of nowhere you knocked me back on my heels I wasn't trying to warn you I wasn't sure how to feel But then your eyes met mine And there were no more excuses I knew what I wanted And I knew it was you Cause your lips on my lips My hands on your hips Swaying to the music only we could hear Sit beneath our feet underneath that fear Shine, starlight, baby. I can feel my life begin in a moment that I would give my life to live again. Everyone before you did me wrong, led me on and turned me on from love. This is bigger than the moment we're in. I got a feeling this is more than a feeling. Your lips on my lips, my hands. On your hips, swaying to the music only we could hear. Say beneath our feet, underneath that fear. Moonshine, starlight. Baby, I could feel my life begin. In a moment that I would give my life to live again. It's like you came out of nowhere. You knocked me back on my heels. I wasn't trying to warn you. I wasn't sure how to feel But then your eyes met mine And there were no more excuses I knew what I wanted And I knew it was you Cause your lips on my lips My hands on your hips Swaying to the music only we could hear Sit beneath our feet underneath that fear Moonshine, starlight Baby, I could feel my life begin In a moment that I would give my life to live again Everyone before you did me wrong Led me on and turned me on from love This is bigger than the moment we're in I got a feeling this is more than a feeling Your lips on my lips My hands on your hips Swaying to the music only we could hear Say beneath our feet, underneath that fear Moonshine, the starlight Congregation may be seated. Dear friends, we've gathered here on holy ground in the presence of God to share in the marriage service of Kristen and Greg who we already need tissues now up front. <laughs> what a wonderful entrance. In the midst of worshiping our loving God, Kristen and Greg will become husband and wife by the promises that they make to each other in this place. Because it is a service of worship, we ask that there be no flash photography from this point on. We'll let our professionals do uh, the work that they're doing to get this on tape and on film. We also ask if you have cell phones or anything that might make a sound, if you would silence them at this point. Kristen and Greg wish to thank you for being a part of their special day. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Greg, do you take Kristen to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. If so, say, I do. I do. Kristen, do you take Greg to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. If so, respond, I do. I do. 
And now will all of you gathered here this afternoon, by God's grace, uphold and care for Kristen and Greg in their life together. If so, shout out together, we will. We will. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love to all people. Enrich Kristen and Greg with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love. And grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may place their hands together. Actually, I'm going to let you hold on to your flowers for just a second. And we're going to have our scripture readings at this time. A reading from Genesis, the second chapter. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made it to a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide. Peace to and the greatest of peace in love. Thank you. So, Kristen and Greg, the day is finally here. All of the days, months of planning, you survived premarital counseling sessions with me, and you've come out looking like this. What a joyous day it is. I want you to do something for me, because a lot of couples don't get to do this during their wedding services. I'd like you to take a moment to turn this way. I want you to face out, and I want you to see everyone who's here. I want you to look at their smiling faces. I want you to see that this church is filled with people who are here to support you and love you. And I want you to soak it all in for just a moment. Then I'm going to have you peer over this way. These guys clean up good. <laughs> and I want to invite everyone, if you're at the reception later, you need to check out the socks. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and this is one of the loveliest sets of bridesmaids I've ever seen. You look stunning. What a joyous day it is, from the flowers and the dresses to, to just being in this place. This place where many years ago, your grandparents got married. My grandpa did that one. Mm -hmm. Many years ago where my parents got married. Then where your mom and dad got married. And Greg, while well, your parents may not have gotten married here, 
they still are a wonderful example for, and we've talked about that in the counseling, how much we learn from the, the models that we've had in our lives of that love that is shared. This is a special day, this is a special place, and I'm truly, truly honored to be a part of what's happening today, so thank you for that opportunity. Now, I have a couple of things I want you to think about. I'm gonna keep it real simple, short, but I want you to think of whatever image is helpful for you. I don't care what it is, but that describes your marriage together. You pick two very special scripture readings, the first from the book of Genesis, and it's a powerful passage that reminds us that we are to be one in marriage together. The, the, the man leaves his mother and father and clings to his wife, and the two become one and one flesh. But if you've ever been to a wedding where they do the unity candle or you've been where they do the other kind of symbols of, of that, everybody coming together, one of the things that I think is very important in our theology is that you don't just mesh into this thing called marriage. You're still Christian. You are a beautiful, special child of God. And you bring all those qualities to this relationship. Greg, you are a special child of God and you bring incredible qualities to this relationship. And the two of you make up whatever this thing is together. You don't stop being who you are individually and those strengths are what come together to make it even more special. But that's not all. You see, you got a bunch of friends here standing all dressed up nice and pretty. They're here to support you. They're a part of this. We got all these folks out here that I had you look at just a few moments ago. They're all a part of this. Your families are a part of this. And as I promised you, from now until whenever, you're stuck with me. If you ever need a pastor for any reason because of your marriage, you better call me. Right? We are all a part of this. And we join you in supporting you in, in your love for one another. And then that love, that's what pops out of that second reading from 1 Corinthians. And when Paul was writing, he didn't use the word love that we use when we describe the physical attraction or, or brotherly, sisterly love like we have for one another as the people of God. He used a special word for love called agape. Agape love is a love where you give of self for the sake of someone else. When he says love is patient, love is kind, the love that you have for one another in your marriage together, it's agape love. And I know it is. I knew that from the first time we talked and started doing some of the planning for this. The love you share is special, it's real, it's heartfelt, and it is agape love. And it's that agape love that's going to help you through all kinds of things in life together. No matter what the highs or lows may be, if you can fall back on that love and on whatever this object is that you're picturing that includes all of us, God is going to bless you in your life together. I speak for all of us, I think, when I say thank you for letting us share in the joy of this day. Now we're going to share some vows. You ready? The Lord God in His goodness created us male and female and by the gift of marriage founded human community in a joy that begins now and is brought to perfection in the life to come. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy and for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity. Greg and Kristen, if it is your intention to share with each other your joys and sorrows and all that the years will bring, with your promises, bind yourselves to each other as husband and wife. And I encourage all of you present to hear these vows well. For these promises to each other make them husband and wife. And I ask that you assist them from now on in the keeping of their vows by your love for them and your prayers in their behalf. If you will share these words with Kristen. Kristen, you're the most amazing person I've ever met. It's like you were specifically created to be my best friend. I have no doubt in my mind that you're my soulmate. You are so intelligent, beautiful, loving. You have the best sense of humor. And joking around with you is when I'm the happiest I could possibly be. You mean the world to me and more. I can't imagine my life without you. Waking up next to you every day makes me the luckiest man in the world. I will do whatever it takes to make sure you're safe and happy as possible. And I will love you with all my heart forever. Okay, so 
person if you share these words with Greg. Greg, I love your sense of humor. I love your big heart, and I just love being with you. Whether we are literally running around Disney World or just hanging out at home, just being with you makes me the happiest person in the world. Growing up, I always dreamt of meeting someone who would love me and all the weirdness that comes with me. When I met you, it was so natural that before I knew it, you said and meant the three words I'd always hoped to hear, I love you. You're my entire world, my best friend, and I can't wait to take on life, travel the world, raise a pretty awesome family, and grow old with you. In our marriage, I promise to listen. I will try really hard. I know I'm a bad listener. <laughs> Uh, I promise to support you, your dreams, and anything that life throws at us. Above, above all else, I promise to love you with all my heart every single day. You are the bottle of rum to my Captain Jack Sparrow, and the Michael Scott to my Holly Flex, and I love you more than you know. I have the race. These rings are used in your marriage today and for the rest of your lives in a very symbolic and special way. They're made of precious metal, which symbolizes purity. They're formed in a circle, which has no beginning and no ending, which symbolizes eternity. As you place these rings on your fingers and as you gaze upon them for the rest of your lives, may they remind you of the purity and the eternity of the love that you have for one another. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, these rings, that the one who gives it and the one who wears it may abide in peace and continue in your favor unto their life's end. Amen. Okay, you'll take that ring, place it on her finger, and repeat these words. I give you this ring. Okay. Right. I, I give, give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With all that I am with all that I am and all that I have and all that I have I honor you I honor you in the name of the Father in the, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit I give you this ring I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow as a symbol of my vow with all that I am with all that I am and all that I have and all that I have I honor you I honor you in the name of the Father in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Son of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Spirit Greg and Kristen by their promises before God and in the presence of family and friends have joined themselves to one another as husband and wife blessed be the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever those whom God has joined together let no one separate Amen. Let me place my hand on yours. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to endure the cross for our sake, that we may have abundance of life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out your abundance of your blessings on Greg and Kristen. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let your love be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them so that their lives together may bear witness to your love. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray. Faithful Lord, source of love, pour down your grace upon Greg and Kristen, that they may fulfill the vows that they've made this day and reflect your steadfast love in their lifelong faithfulness to each other. As members with them of the body of Christ, use us to support their life together. We pray also for all families throughout the world, asking that you bless the family and renew your people. Enrich husbands and wives, parents and children more and more with your grace. 
the strengthening and supporting each other, they may serve those in need and be a sign of the fulfillment of your perfect kingdom, where with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God through all ages of ages. Amen. I invite you now to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Greg, Kristen, may God Almighty send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. May the hand of God protect you. The holy angels accompany you. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I might have your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our honored guests for the evening. Starting with our wedding party, ladies and gentlemen, Erica Richard, escorted by Jake Patton. Kelsey Lather escorted by Brandon Williams. Taylor 
Tyler Havens escorted by CJ Scroggins. Kaylee Bliven escorted by Justin Savage. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night of feeling. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night of feeling. Tonight's the night. Hey, let's live it up. Let's live it up. I got my money. Hey. Katie Hendricks escorted by Trenton Kilby. Let's get, get up. Oh. Fill up my cup. Drink. Mazel tov. Look at her dance. Move it, move Just it. Just take it off. Oh. Let's paint the town. Paint the town. We'll shut it down. We'll shut it down. Let's burn the roof. And then we'll do it again. Let's do it. 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 And do it. And do it. Let's live it up. And do it. And do it. And do it. Do it. Do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Jazlyn Jazzy J Judah escorted by Hayden Meyer. Here we go. We got a rock, 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 rock. Easy come, easy go. Now we on top. Feel the shot. Body rock. Rockin' don't stop. Round and round, up and down, around the clock. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, and Sunday. Get, 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 get with us. Our maid of honor, Lauren Ragland, escorted by best man Jude DeWarzik. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mr. and Mrs. Richard!
father of the bride, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Kemp. Uh, we want 
to thank the Richards for the wonderful rehearsal dinner last night. For those of you that were there, uh, it was just absolutely beautiful, and uh, we had a wonderful time. Beautiful setting, everything, everything was so nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, last time I did this, I just kind of did it unrehearsed. Uh, this was in 2012 with that one. Um, that's Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Uh, I got some so-so feedback on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to be a little bit more structured. Uh, so I've written some things down. And when I write things down and I read, I tend to get choked up. So I'm asking you to bear with me uh, as I read through this. We would like to thank and welcome everyone here this evening. And thank you for being part of this wonderful occasion. We love our daughter, Kristen, very much, and we are so proud of the beautiful woman that she has become. I've always been a believer in the statements that things happen for a reason, and things always work out according to God's plan. I believe the beautiful couple you see standing before you tonight uh, is proof of that. We are so happy to welcome Greg into our family and are proud to be a part of his. Rita and Mark did a wonderful job raising Greg, uh, and we could not be and we could not ask for a better person for our daughter to share her life with. I know Greg loves uh, Kristen very much because he's told me many, many times. <laughs> and uh, if you were there uh, at the at the wedding this afternoon, I think that. Uh, that was very, very evident, and we're just so happy and so proud of both of them. Um, I ask you to join us uh, in congratulating Kristen and Greg and wishing them all the best for a long and happy life together. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with... Uh, so, obviously, I am the sister of the groom, and I know what you're thinking. We don't really look alike, but I promise you we are related. I have checked. But um, it's kind of weird that we're actually at this point. You know, for a while there, I didn't really think it would be happening for a while. Before Greg met Kristen, he didn't even know how to do his own laundry. But now he knows how to do his laundry, dishes, and apparently he vacuums. So, way to go, Kristen! Killed it! <laughs> but um, for those of you who don't know what it's like to have an older brother, you not only get an older brother, but you also get a bodyguard as well. So my brother has always been extremely overprotective of me um, as far as confronting people who used to pick on me as well as threatening any guy who has come within 10 feet of me, even if he's just a friend. Um, but... It's also such a great thing that he's so protective of me because he cares so much. Um, and, you know, growing up and moving around and being from a military family, you don't really get those friends um, that you grow up with, that you go through school with and you have, um, you know, that you've known since you were in kindergarten and you've done everything with. But I got something more than that in my brother. Um, he truly is um, my best friend, has been uh, my best friend for 20 years. And um, I'm so glad that you have found yours and you get to marry her. Um, I know that from the way that he has taken care of me and the way that he has protected me and the way that he's watched out for me and loved me, um, that he's going to do even more for you. And I've had the pleasure of getting to see that um, through your relationship and through your love. Um, so that's been a really great thing to watch. Um, I kind of knew that this was something serious from the beginning because for those of you who know my brother well, he's a very go-with-the-flow kind of guy, doesn't really care about a lot. Um, but when he does care, he cares very deeply and very well. So when all of a sudden he's Skyping this girl in London twice a day, every day, out of nowhere, heard nothing about her before, I knew that it had to be a big deal. I knew that Kristen was going to be someone very special to my brother. Uh, but at the time, I didn't realize just how special she would be to him. Um, 
Obviously, I've known Greg my whole entire life, and I've never seen him happier, more full of joy, more loving, more caring than I have seen him when he has been with you. You truly have made his life everything that it is. You have been there through, with him through everything, supported him, and really been what has brought him so much joy. And you're not only just his girlfriend turned fiance, turned now wife, but you're truly a part of our family. Um, it takes something special to be a Richard. You have to be just weird enough, just cool enough, and just fun enough, and you fit the bill completely. Um, you have surpassed every expectation of anything that I could have ever hoped for my brother and a wife, um, everything and more, as well as, you know, I've always, always wanted a sister. You can ask Greg how much I used to tell him that I wanted a sister when we were kids, and I just never thought that I would get that in you, but I got that and more. You have been such a big part of my life ever since you've come into my brother's, and you have supported me in ways that I will never be able to repay you for. Um, you have been there um, to be able to talk about the silly girl things that Greg doesn't want to talk about. You know, he only wants to talk about sports, but you can actually be there for me and talk to me about those things, and I truly, truly thank you for that. So, for everything that you've done for him, everything that you've done for our family, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I just pray that you know, you guys keep loving each other, you keep finding the joy through everything, through the hard times, through the fights, through the suffering, that you always keep that joy that you guys have. And I know you will. So I can't wait to see what the Lord brings in your life. I love you both so, so much. And thank you for everything you both have done in my life. To Kristen and Greg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our best man, Mr. Jude Dworzik. <laughs> to uh, start off, Mark and Rita, my surrogate parents for multiple weekend weeks during the summers growing up, thank you for last night. Everyone who was at the rehearsal dinner would know it was just an absolute perfect evening. Um, to the camps, I mean, look at this place. Everything is gorgeous. This entire weekend has just been the depiction of class. Uh, it's just been straight out of a storybook. So thank you for all of that. Uh, Greg. So I am Greg's first cousin on his mother's side, for those who don't, haven't had a chance to meet me. But cousin does a poor job of kind of conveying the relationship that I think Greg and I have. Um, Every summer since I was a toddler, maybe six, seven years old, since Greg was a baby, we would spend uh, multiple weeks together every summer, three, sometimes four, every place imaginable that, you can, that they lived. Mark was in the military, so they lived in multiple places, multiple places in Florida, Illinois, or I guess St. Louis, even South Dakota, I would go to visit them. The only two places that they lived that I did not visit them, Saudi Arabia, in Alabama, <laughs> which I do not think you can blame me for. When, uh, apologies to any Alabamas in the, in the uh, crowd. When, uh, when Greg asked me to be his best man, he, uh, he did it in a way that was just, it, it blew me away. And before I tell you how he did it, um, I have to say, Greg, uh, Rita and Kristen definitely helped him with it, because there's no way that Greg thought of this on his own. So I get home from work one day, and there is a just a manila envelope does not have a return address. I was like, man, this is a little weird. Who sent me this envelope? And I open it up, and there's just, you know, baby pictures. There's probably a stack of 50 baby pictures. And as I start going through them, they're not just baby pictures of me. There's pictures of me and Greg probably every year since we've been, you know, five, six years old, done in chronological order until the point where I'm 26, Greg's 23, 23? Yeah, got that right. Uh, till we are today, and the last one just had a best man with a question mark, and it, it really just hit me that, Greg, you know, I wasn't blessed with a biological brother, but 
to me, you are him. Anyone who knows Greg knows that he has a, a rare passion for life. He expresses this in a way that is just, he has so much fun. Uh, if you were at the rehearsal dinner last night, Greg impromptu serenaded his beautiful wife to Frank Sinatra. There's multiple times we were in Las Vegas and Greg challenged someone to a dance contest and Greg's best move was push-ups. Greg has a passion for life, and I think he found someone who shares that same passion with him, and it's a rare thing. Watching you two together, you guys clearly love each other. I think that's evident from anyone who, who has seen you two interact with each other for 10 minutes, Kristen, but I think it goes further than that. You guys have a type of electric chemistry, a companionship, friendship, whatever you want to call it. I've been thinking a long time about how to describe, encapsulate just the kind of bond that you two have. And the best thing that I could come up with is that you somehow found a little piece of each other that you never knew was missing. So if everyone could raise their glass. To Greg and Kristen, to the Kemps, welcome to our family. To Greg, I love you, I'm so happy for you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our maid of honor, Lauren Ragland. Appreciate that. Thanks. I was going to try to do it without paper, but it's not happening. So get over it. OK. Uh, my name is Lauren. I'm Kristen's big sister and uh, maid of honor. I am married, but we're not going to get into the matron maid thing. I just I'm not old enough for that. So OK. <laughs> Um, as some of you can relate to or may soon find, uh, wedding planning takes a lot of work. It's very crazy. Uh, lots of moving parts, lots of things to do. Um, I remember six months ago, I'd be like, okay, we planned the bachelorette, planned the shower, I should probably think of my maid of honor speech, okay? A couple weeks go by, Christian's got her dress, I've got my dress, all right. Should probably think of my maid of honor speech. Um, Two weeks ago, okay, um, everything's going, we're moving, okay, I should, I really probably should do the maid of honor speech right now. Um, think back to Thursday, and now I did this, and now I'm in front of you, nice people here, okay? So, um, truth is though, Kristen, I've been writing this speech my entire life, my entire life. No. Okay. Breathe. Who said breathe? Thanks. Okay. Um, I can't tell you how many times, mostly during my, I have uh, had a 45 minute commute to work, I would think about Kristen and the beautiful, talented adult woman she's become. Then I would think about the sweet, mischievous, and mischievous, it's accentuated, kind child uh, that Kristen was. Uh, she always had a big heart, and we say she would get that from my Nana. Um, when she was young, she started a club called Animal Help News. Um, she would uh, solicit money from our friends and family. And um, she, did do, she did go buy food and donate it to the animals. I, there's a picture, I've seen it to prove it, so that's good. Um, her, her fondness of animals and nature led her to write and produce her number one hit song. Um, it's called Hillbilly in Another Country. Yep. I'm a hillbilly in another country. It's, it's, I'm going to ask the DJ later to play it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, when I, <laughs> they know it. When I, uh, when I think about Kristen, I can't help but think about um, her soccer games and the endless tournaments and early morning games my parents would drag me to. Um, that was a lot of fun. She was definitely a soccer all-star, uh, still is. Along with becoming a great athlete as she grew up, um, she also became um, a performer, I guess you would say. Um, not, not on a stage, um, really, but just for the sake of her friends, honestly. Um, 
Greg, this woman has dressed up like Captain Jack Sparrow <laughs> at least 15 times in her adult life. So, <laughs> I don't know if you're into that or whatever, but that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, he is, I think. <laughs> Um, along with those laughable memories, um, I'll find myself thinking about the more heart heartfelt times. Next page. Um, I vividly remember the look on Kristen's face when I surprised her for our sorority initiation. Um, it was pure surprise, happiness, and love, and it's a look I'll remember forever. Okay, so I won't have to breathe. So um, I want to talk about Greg for just a second. Um, and, but really, Greg, something that I, I'm going to ask of you. So I'm letting Kristen go under your wing tonight <laughs> from being a protective big sister, but I need you to be a few things for her. Um, I need you to be her reason. Kristen is very emotional. She makes emotional decisions. Um, but it looks like you're very emotional too, so I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Maybe you can work on that together. Um, I, need, I need you to be her reality. Uh, Kristen is the acting president and sole founding member of La, La La Land. Have you heard of it? Yes. Um, sh she dreams big, um, but for, the sake, for your sake and your bank account's sake, just try to keep her grounded. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep her grounded in reality. And then uh, lastly, and I think this goes without saying, I need you to love her fiercely but I think we can see that very apparent. Um, and everyone said this, but if, if you guys get to watch Kirsten and Greg outside of this setting, you can just see very clearly the adoration and love they have for each other. Um, it's the kind of love that Frank Sinatra writes songs about. It's the kind of love that screenwriters, they make movies about. And it's the kind of love that um, everybody wants, but not everybody is lucky enough to find and it's the kind of love that a lot of you share in this room with somebody else. So if you could raise your glass to Mr. and Mrs. Richard. Cheers.
Now, Kristen, don't go too far. Here we go. This is what you came for Lightning strikes every time she moves And everybody's watching her But she's looking at you
Yes, sir. <laughs>